Hello, my name is Dr. Melanie Bourgeau. I'm a third year pathology resident at Emory University, and welcome to my fourth video where I'll be focusing on blue and nexal tumors. Before I get started, I just want to remind everyone that you can find the links to the whole slide images for the unknown cases in the video description. Case 1 is an excision of a tender nodule on the arm of a 68-year-old male. At low power, I see several large blue nodules with some attached adipose tissue, and I don't see any overlying dermis or epidermis, which makes me think this is a subcutaneous lesion. When I start to look around, I can see that some areas are solid, while other areas contain nests and cords of cells within an edematous stroma with dilated blood vessels and scattered lymphocytes. When you look closer, you can see that this lesion is composed of two types of cells. At the periphery, there are cells of smaller, more hyperchromatic nuclei, while in the center, the cells have larger nuclei with more open chromatin. Lastly, if you look carefully, you can see that there are scattered ducts throughout the lesion, like this one here. This is an example of a spiradenoma, which is a type of benign sweat gland tumor that shows overlapping features with its so-called sibling, cylindroma. At high power, both spiradenoma and cylindroma can look similar. They both have two populations of basaloid cells, as well as scattered lymphocytes. Sweat ducts are also seen in both lesions, and can be small and subtle, like in the spiradenoma I showed, or large and prominent, like in the cylindroma. In general, the stroma of spiradenomas is more edematous with dilated blood vessels, while the stroma in cylindromas has abundant basement membrane deposition. As you can see from these two images, the most obvious distinction between a spiradenoma and cylindroma is made at low power. Spiradenoma is composed of large, circumscribed nodules, while cylindroma is composed of micronodules, which mold to each other in a jigsaw pattern or a giraffe spot-like appearance. However, like many agnexal tumors, these exist on a spectrum, and so-called hybrid tumors can occur. Clinically, Spiradenoma presents as painful nodules on the ventral surfaces of the body. Cylindromas present as red nodules on the head and neck, especially the scalp, and can be painful as well. They are also significantly more common in women. Both spiradenoma and cylindroma can be associated with Brooks-Spiegler syndrome, which is an autosomal dominant disorder caused by germline CYLD mutations and characterized by multiple spiradenomas, cylindromas, and trichoepitheliomas. In practice, the vast majority of cases are sporadic. CYLD mutations have been identified in nearly all cases of cylindroma and almost a third of spiradenomas. ALPK1 mutations have been identified in about 45% of spiradenomas, and these are mutually exclusive with CYLD mutations. If you want to learn more about molecular alterations in anexal tumors, I've included a link to an excellent review paper in the video description. Let's move on to our second case. This is an excision of a papule on the face of a 50-year-old woman. At low power, I can see this lesion is located in the superficial dermis. It consists of nests of basaloid cells with peripheral palisading, as well as occasional keratinaceous cysts. The stroma is more cellular and is distinct from the adjacent dermis. Moving to higher power, I can see that these basaloid cells are uniform, but mitotic figures and apoptotic bodies are easily identified. Lastly, in some areas, the stromal cells appear to get more plump and start to indent into these basaloid cells. This is an example of a trichoepithelioma a benign follicular tumor with differentiation towards the bulb of the hair follicle. When comparing basaloid follicular neoplasms to a normal hair follicle, it's surprisingly easy to see the similarities. The nests of basaloid cells with peripheral palisading correspond to the bulb of the hair follicle. Papillary mesenchymal bodies, which are the small aggregates of round spindled stromal cells that indent into the basaloid nests, are homologous to the hair papilla. 
Lastly, the cellular fibrous stroma that surrounds the basaloid cells is homologous to the adventitia, or fibrous sheath, of the hair follicle. Other features that may be present include keratin cysts, calcifications, and a foreign body type giant cell reaction to a ruptured keratin cyst. Because of the differentiation towards the bulb of the hair follicle, which is the germinative or proliferative portion, brisk mitotic activity and apoptotic bodies alone are not concerning features for malignancy. There are actually two types of basaloid follicular neoplasms trichoepithelioma and trichoblastoma. Similar to other groups of adnexal tumors like spiradenoma and cylindroma, as well as the acrospiromas, these two lesions are composed of similar appearing cells, but differ in terms of their low power architecture. Both lesions often present on the head and neck of adults. Trichoblastomas are commonly located on the scalp of older adults, and they are slow growing lesions, but can become quite large. In general, small, superficially located lesions with a connection to the epidermis or adjacent hair follicle are called trichoepitheliomas. In contrast, larger lesions located deeper in the dermis or subcutis and lack a connection to the epidermis are called trichoblastomas. Clinically, this distinction is not significant and there is no difference in management. The most important differential for these lesions is basal cell carcinoma and differentiating between this and a basaloid follicular tumor may be difficult on small biopsies. Features that would favor basal cell carcinoma include a mucinous or desmoplastic stroma with artifactual clefting between the stroma and the basaloid nests, as well as ulceration, deep infiltrative growth, and perineural invasion. Features that would favor a basaloid follicular neoplasm include the presence of papillary mesenchymal bodies, and for deeper lesions, a lack of connection to the epidermis. In addition, CK20 will stain passenger Merkel cells in these tumors, which are not present in basal cell carcinoma. Other stains, such as CK15, CD10, CD34, and BCL2 have been evaluated to differentiate between basal cell carcinoma and follicular tumors, but can be challenging to interpret and are not commonly used in practice. If you'd like to learn more, I've included a link to a recent paper in Nature which discusses this in more detail. And that's all I have for now. Please like and subscribe, and you can check out my Twitter and Kiko accounts for more educational pathology content. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for my next video.